Oh, fucking no. hell. We got what you came for, buddy. is finished and I can personally look back on a year best described oh, as a roller coaster ride. In this video we will dive into our approach month by month using the past year as an example on how we fish successfully for Northern Pike year round. The year has been hectic and filled with highs and lows, the insane incidents, tournaments, the recovery process along the way and of course a lot of fishing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is part one of a two part series. explain each month with its own unique approach. The first video will focus on the first six months of the year and timestamps are down below so if you are interested in a specific month make sure to check it out. And also if you're wondering why my voice sounds so weird because I got quite a bit of a cold. That being said, enjoy guys. 2023 started out cold, unusually cold compared to how warm the current winter feels right now. This is always the tricky part. And thus, slow trolling was on the menu, but it was torture to be outside that day. So, I took a piss. And I can <laughs> tell you, getting your little burbot out in these cold conditions is far from comfortable. <laughs> Ouch. It's cold. It's really cold. It is, in that regard, a perfect day to do some slow trolling, I guess. Um, there's a couple of things you need to pay attention to with slow trolling. You need clear water. That's for one thing, uh, because you want to present your bait. Like I'm running at a 20 meters of depth, and we don't know how deep. I'm spotting a fish now on the sonar, which is at 17 meters. Now we're not getting our baits at 17 meters. We're presenting it like I don't know how deep are you, Louis, running? Yeah, the deepest is maybe eight meters. Yeah, it's eight. So Sometimes even 10. Um, later on, we'll explain how you can check a couple of things, how deep your lure is running. And uh, there's a couple of tricks, especially with these live te technologies these days. Uh, but you want to have clear water because if the fish are at like 70 meters, and 17 that is, not 70, uh, <laughs> and your bait is running at 8, it still needs to cross quite some distance. It cross, needs to cross 9 meters up. Um, so you need a bait with a big profile, and you need something that. Um, Preferably make some noise as well, so they uh, get the. Uh, yeah, something that makes it really worth their while to to yeah. attack. Yeah, uh, the um, the reward needs to be bigger than the effort that they need to make. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, yeah, they're not they're not gonna come up for a tiny little roach. Uh, yeah, they want to have a big snack. Um, and also, these days are usually um, very slow. Uh, we're trolling slow, but you're not gonna get much activity either as well. But the reward can be really big. You can get really, really big fish, heavy fish, but it's a difficult game. But it is a fun game, uh, especially with the water wolves. Frustrating sometimes as well. You can see big fish following and um, yeah. yeah. Franz is a big fan of the water wolves as well. <laughs> um, yeah. And it's a it's a nice alternative for you know depth baiting and harbors or uh, you know uh, do the pelagic which is really popular these days. Um, we're a fan of it as well. But um, during the daytime, the slow trolling can be really effective. So you need clear water. You need a lake where there are big fish. You need a lake where there's some depth. And you want to have calm conditions because now it is uh, three or four, so it's probably blowing like, like six or seven meters per second in terms of wind speeds. And this is like on the edge of comfortable, yeah. but <laughs> yeah. if you step it up a couple notches. <laughs> yeah, I think your little burbot just froze. Yeah, then your little burbot becomes really, really tiny. So. <laughs> yeah, stroopwafel. <laughs> These are the best of cookies, even the sweetest kinds of green. Still running it at two kilometers an hour. Now I got the 50 centimeter burbot. Ten meters behind the boat, and it's running at six meter. I want to run it at like eight, so I'm gonna run it 15 meters behind the boat. All right, with the paravan on, it's 
15 meters behind the boat. But my rod tip going down is probably gonna run like, uh, still I can see it. Yeah. yeah. Runs close to 8 meters deep with a paravan. One thing that is important when you're out slow trolling like this, it's a couple of things. Um, you're gonna go really, really slow. So you don't have the force of the boat setting the hook for you. So if you get a take, you need to be quick, really quick. Uh, even though it's cold and you're busy with, you know, grabbing food and all kinds of stuff, you need to be fast because the pike takes it. Um, the resistance of the paravan is way less when you go two kilometers an hour compared to three and a half. Also, set the drag tight, as tight as possible. You don't want to give them any wiggle room at all, especially when you're fishing out with these big rubber baits. We covered these uh, tips in a previous video that we did for Savage Gear. Both the big burbot and the 36 centimeter burbot are running between six and eight meters. And we are hovering around you know, the 20 meter area, trying to present it slow. And we're gonna slowly move a bit towards the drop off over there. I got my map, which is essential with slow trolling, but you don't want to get stuck with all these expensive baits out. You don't want to get stuck with all these baits out. So I got my map set, which shows some depth shading. Uh, doesn't matter if you have Lorenz or C map, um, Hummingbird, but I think Lorenz has it as well that you can map your own chart. Um, my Hummingbird I got set that the shallow areas are the, the gray, uh, the, the shallow areas are the brown part. So when it's less than 10 meters deep, you get a really, really brown area. And other than that, it slowly goes from brown to yellow to green to blue. Uh, and I try to stay close to the area where the, uh, the, uh, the drop-off comes off. But I don't want to get too close. So I'm trying to avoid the areas that are uh, less deep than 10 meters. And the strike that we got, I think it uh, was around 14 meters deep. So we try to stay in this area over here. And also important, find the bait fish. If you find the bait fish in a certain corner of the lake, that's probably where the pike are and where the fish are a bit more active. And that's what we found in this corner of the lake. More bait fish and the whales got to take in this corner. So now we're just gonna focus on this area and basically just draw lines on the map. Just go back and forth, back and forth and uh, systematically fish this certain area. And hopefully one of the fish comes out to play today. And our reward for fishing this brutally cold winter day, one single take. Oh, it's really properly winter now. I was filming Sean for a bit and I was holding the camera for five minutes maybe. And these fingers, they are attached, but I don't feel them anymore. Get them in your pockets too quickly, buddy. <laughs> now, winter is often uncomfortable, but it has big and heavy rewards in store. In recent years, we started to appreciate the shorter days even more with the introduction of live technology. We've been fishing with the Mega Live for almost three seasons now, and especially in down mode, it is an amazing piece of kit that offers a lot of fun during the shorter days of the year when fishing in the dark is most effective. Yeah, nice and heavy fish. Whoa. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, super happy with this one. Man, did we have to suffer to get this one? Look <laughs> out! Besides the slow trolling and the pelagic fishing during the dark, there's also casting big baits above deep water, yeah, which we'll cover piece. later on. And also fishing from the banks. Yes. How many times did it, 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 it took your bait? Like four, four times. times? Okay, is dan wel hard in plaats van wat zachter. Oh ja. En dat schiet van links naar rechts. Ah, fuck. 
Yeah. Ah. Oei. Today I'm out with Frans and we are going to target Dutch polder biker. For those who don't know, polders are a word for... Polders are areas where the Dutch made the land dry and they made little canals to pump the water into yeah. the big rivers. So it's all like man-made systems and filled with water. We cultivated the land and created excellent fishing water. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's winter time, so it's cold. And um, one of the reasons why you can fish these areas is because uh, during summer it's nearly impossible to fish here, I guess. Yeah, there's a lot of weeds and uh, yeah. lily pads and stuff like that. And also it's, it's just really shallow. It's like yeah. a meter deep or something like that. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so we need to fish shallow. Uh, we're gonna do that with a variety of baits. I'm gonna focus on using the Chubby Chaser. You got the Viper. Yes. I am shedding it today. Not shagging, but shedding. <laughs> I've got a little Viper with a jig head in it of 10 grams and a little stinger hook. So the smaller fish also stay on. Let's head out and see if we can catch some pike. Um, it's not a numbers game, I think. We're not gonna get 20 or 30. Uh, and it's also not a game where you catch like uh, a one meter 30 pike. <laughs> but it is so. a lot of fun. Uh, you have like typical Dutch scenery um, combined with, um, you know, just being out in this, you know, grim and cold winter. Well, it's not really grim. We got full sun today. We had some frost this morning. And we're just gonna walk a lot of kilometers to uh, hopefully catch a couple pike. Let's go. Come on. <laughs> Oops. Yo! Oh! I missed him, gek. Oh! Five minutes into the game, already two pike uh, well, sort of lost. <laughs> it's freezing cold, but the sun is shining. We're lucky to have this little yeah, stream behind us that's flowing through nicely because I think we would have a problem of uh, fro <laughs> frozen solid uh, 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 streams everywhere. Let me get when you had a boat angler out here. Nice! <laughs> wow, inhaled it. Ah, oh, fuck. Oh, die sloot is helemaal dicht. Ja, yes! Ja, oké. Laat het. Laat het nog een beetje pakken hoor. Oh! Kijk dan. Oh, kijk. Okay. Oh. Wow. Hij ligt gewoon te kijken hier. Nice! Dit was crazy. <laughs> This one was really, really fearless. Nice. How many times did it, 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 it took your bait? Like four, four times. times? Yeah. Only just, the tail? Only the tail all the time. So. 
met ourselves with pole steel. And I, uh, I'm gonna start off with the jerkster. <laughs> so a nice side canal to the one we were fishing. Just wanted to make a quick cast, and the moment the monster shed landed in the water, bang, right on it. Besides a couple of polder fishing sessions, we also did some zander fishing in the Dutch capital, which was surprisingly fun. February was just at its end when disaster struck. We covered the accident on the channel in a previous video, explaining how Sven and I escaped from a situation that could have ended very bad in many different ways. These big ships are no joke. Ironically, I warned about the hazard of these big ships on big open lakes on several occasions. And now I got too close for comfort myself. While handling a big 15 kilogram pike on the 32 centimeter road from Savage Gear, I thought we moved the boat well out of harm's way and we put the boat on spot lock there. With just a few seconds to respond, we noticed that this big ship was on a collision course and it just ran straight over us at full speed. With just three days in the hospital and a successful surgery, I was sent back home with the main priority for the coming weeks to start walking again as fast as possible while being under the guidance of a physiotherapist. A little over three weeks later, I jumped back on the boat. This time on Sven his boat because my Marcraft, it was completely wrecked. But I just, I just needed to get back on the water and just catch a glimpse of, you know, what spring fishing could be in the Netherlands. Which was horrible this spring for most people. A lot of wind and rain and just far from ideal fishing conditions. In March we like to focus on the shallows, cast with jerk baits and all kinds of shallow running baits above the existing or sometimes if the water is warm enough, upcoming grass. You can do trolling as well and just fish really really shallow and that makes perfect conditions for fishing with the water wolf camera. Overall a lot of fun, no giants, but hey, I was back out on the water. Prime condition. Yeah. The start is rather. Zo gas jullie helemaal. Alsof je aan de vloerkaas zit, jongen. Echt een mooie rol hoor. Je hebt je vuurtje. Je vuurtje. Nee, man, ik rook niet. Maar heb je aansteken? Gas. Ik, ik rook niet. Nee, yo. Ah. <laughs> After the accident it was very uncertain if I was able to fish this spring at all. Yet here I am in Sweden. With a strong will to go and amazing friends that helped me out, spring fishing on the big lake was back on the menu. It 
has been a while since I was able to fish with my buddy Roy van Streels, who is not only talented in creating amazing content, but also a really skilled pike angler. We finally got the chance to fish again, and the result was 7 fish that crossed the meter mark in one day. It was such a sick day. I was lifting the eel like from the deep. You know that last final moment when your bait starts to rise up when you're fishing really deep? And I just came up vertically and just inhaled the eel. Now we're strider. No teeth on this side anymore. Oh no, I think that looks like 107. Nice. There's another one swimming around. Yes, we had a big follower. Oh. Let's go. So let's get with your heart. Kijk, zal even kijken, dus ik kijk. Ah, hij is het al goed in staat, ja. Dat is het wel. Ja, maar bij. Het is uh, meter 10 nummer 4, of niet? Echt, hè? <laughs> Pre-spawners, that's what we're fishing for.
Nice. You escape the wind a bit because it's just too gnarly out there to fish, so we tried a uh, shallow bay. Not much going on until we went until the end of the bay and on the deviator. Super nice. Yes, and I were just discussing about if we ever had caught a, uh, a meter plus pike in this bay, and so far only small fish. And then this fish hit the deviator. Super nice. If you want to see additional content from us and support the channel, consider becoming a channel member. Recently we started doing how to rig videos on several baits that are successful for us. We also launched a WhatsApp community which is fairly new, where our channel members can ask us questions about tactics, trolling gear, rods, reels, electronics, but also just have a casual chat with us. Last but not least, we have discount on several brands for our channel members, including Rebel Cell, Lucky Lures. ASOX Inc, Revolution Tackle and Leech. More info down below. Depending on the conditions we like to fish either shallow in the base or a little deeper on the structures. Sweden is known for its erratic spring and it can be really really cold or super sunny and almost too comfortable to fish well. Well, all in the game. Cool shot though of that. Well, fish I think it pushed like one meter ten. Spit the new Scout Jet 23 out. Fishing it with a 15 grand sinker and just came up like a rocket. Inhaled it. We thought it was hooked quite properly and then um, just came up and shook it out. Good start of the day, I guess. We have super, super calm conditions, so it's not really ideal pike fishing conditions at the moment, but we got our first contact and that's our first clue of where we need to find the fish today. So let's continue fishing. I was just saying to Jesper, like I'm, I wonder if they are like shallow or like on the edge of the shallows and I think this one was close to the shallows but the words didn't even leave my mouth and then ah, this thing hit the Scout Shed 23. Nice. What a bulky fish. Hits the 90 centimeter mark but really beefy. Really, really beefy. Let's get her back. Bye bye. Fair take. Really nice. Seems like we have found some fish and the way we are approaching this spot now is we are heading against the wind, which sounds or feels a bit odd in the beginning, but especially when the wind is like, you know, not ideal for drifting, but it's still doable to cast against the wind. That's where a longer rod like this, like the pike flat rod comes into play because a longer rod allows you to let the rod work for you. And with a shorter rod, like imagine casting with a jerk bait rod with heavier baits against the wind, it really gets on your uh, your shoulders, your back, and you really need to work, and you're never gonna get the distance that you're gonna get with a long rod like, like this. Uh, has a casting weight up to 170 grams, so perfect for the 27 and the 23. Um, and like I mentioned before, we're heading against the wind. The reason why we're doing that is we wanna zigzag over a spot. This wind is still fairly mild. You could go and let yourself drift over the spot, run back and drift over again. But that takes a lot of time. The time you need to drive back, it's time you could also spend casting on fishing. So what we are doing, we're driving the boat with a trolling engine against the wind. First we're gonna fish this section against the wind and then we're gonna let ourselves drift off with the wind on the other section. Thus making like a U-turn 
over the spot and then we can fish the entire area with one go and that being said this is only possible when the wind is in such a calm state like this if it's blowing too hard it can be quite difficult to go against the wind and also drifting will be a bit more difficult then you would need to use a drift anchor but we'll cover that later on one really good tool which i like with Minn Kota and hummingbirds is the autopilot combined with the one boat network that allows my trolling engine to connect to my screen and then on my screen i can see the course and i can see the actual heading where the boat is going and that allows me to fish without having to touch the buttons the entire time the ideal speed for casting depends on what you want to do and with what kind of baits also what you're used to i know that we dutch guys are used to fishing a lot faster than people in sweden people like to spot log like to fish really slow and grind out these spots but on a day like today where i expect the fish to be active i want to keep movement in the boat i want to cast make one or two casts on one one like stretch like 10 12 meters if there's a pike it will take otherwise move on and that way we fish fast and we fish multiple spots and then you catch multiple fish on slower days you want to slow down and you want to make more casts on that spot or when you are fishing deeper water like 8 or 12 or 14 meters deep then yes you need slower speeds because you need a slower retrieve and you don't want to have that speed of the boat coming along with you but more on speed later on Fish across the meter mark. I don't think it's a tanky little fish, but it's uh, it's. <laughs> uh, the rear, the front treble. That's why the take was so hard. We didn't even have time to set up the cameras. It was just smack. Uh, she was hooked so deep that this treble was sitting all the way in the back of the throat. This one. So I took no chances, cut the treble to pieces, just to replace a 60 cent treble. Fish is back to fight another day. Super, super hard to take, but you know, smack. She got the gentle here. <laughs> what a hit. Wow. This one hit it like a train. Nice. Probably 1.5, 1.7 or something like that. Hasn't really spawned that yet. Although it has some damage on the tail, but... Oh, on the Scout Jet 23, which seems to be the MVP today. What a fish. Let's get it back quickly and I think the buy is on. Really odd because the sun is coming out and we're getting the takes. The fish are moving a bit more towards the drop off and they are feeding at the moment. So nice.
Take. Now May, if the fishing season is open to where you are located, offers many different options in terms of fishing. You can do trolling above deep water, shallow water, pelagic fishing on the edges towards the shallows, spin fishing in bays, cast jerk baits, soft baits, swim baits. Everything is on the table, and that makes May one of my favorite months to fish, especially for Northern Pike. But if I had to choose, I would do casting on the open water. The rising water temperatures make the fish hit even harder than they did before. We're gonna fish above slightly deeper water, um, between four and six meters. And we're gonna do a slow presentation on a location where we have multiple really, really good takes. And I'm already like putting up um, high and big expectations towards you because the takes are like brutal. Yo, Jesus, what an aanbeet! Yo, whoa, whoa, what an aanbeet! <laughs> really brutal, like, I was giggling and screaming like a child last week when I was getting takes that were like absolutely mental because you do a slow presentation, these fish come up from, from, from the deep and they smash the baits like, it's like hooking a freight train. It, it's, for pike fishing, I don't think you can get any more exciting takes than these. Um, Besides top waters, maybe, that, but that's more the visual aspect. Um, yeah, slow presentation. You cast, you twitch, you make a little vibration, and you just let them hang still for like one and two seconds. And usually during those long pauses, you do get the takes. Um, yeah, just hope the fish are here as well, because that's the element I can't really control. But um, yeah, otherwise, it's gonna be fun, so stay tuned. <laughs> one somehow like I'm the guy that always goes for the big baits but I don't know this 23 centimeter version of the scouts yeah correct way this one needs some tender loving care with a soldering tool but um yeah awesome awesome bait once you start to understand how to mitigate the drop and let it hang still this with a 15 gram hat That is the first meter plus pike of the day. Saw the fish, I think 101 or 102. Just gonna measure it real quick afterwards, but nice. What a take. I lifted up the pole tail trout just towards the surface and then let it rest for like one or two seconds. And the trick is to reel up the slack and uh, create that artificial hang time, so to speak, because the bait it doesn't sink super fast, but you wanna mitigate that sinking by lifting your tip and reeling in the slack. But, um, what a fish, nice. <laughs> that was such a brutal day. There it looks. Oh, it hurt my, you know, it smashed, smashed the side of the rod in my ribs. So like, here, relax. Super 
super nice. Our time is almost up, but we have one final cool. spot in mind. Let's get some photos and get her back, buddy. Final day. Oh my god. <laughs> Let's get her back, buddy. Bye bye. Yeah, I am done, girl. Well, buddy. Congratulations. Thank you very much. <laughs> what a fish. Oh, there's a droplet on the lens. Ah, on the lemon uh, pull sail. Seemed a bit slow. We're like, ah, oh, you know, maybe the fish are like thinking about the Netherlands. <laughs> what a way to, uh, to close your trip to Sweden. Whoa. Yeah, we need the headbacks. Now, when I'm back in the Netherlands, I could opt for casting again, but there's just that special window when the grass isn't that high and the water is still really clear. And then, man, it is Waterwolf camera heaven. You can get some amazing footage while using the Waterwolf above the grass with shallow running swim baits like 25 centimeter roach from Savage Gear or the Pulse Tail Trout. June, if the water temperature is not too high and the grass is still low enough, is excellent for casting and trolling above the grass. And also early June is the window where the Predator Tour kicks off. Today I'm joined with Franz and Jesper and I are practicing for the Predator Tour. Um, we caught some good pike yesterday, so today we're gonna focus on freshing up our perch skills because they're like utterly shit. Um, every year we are struggling with getting the perch. We waste like one and a half day during the entire tournament trying to catch a couple decent perch. But I got Franz with me today, so I'm super confident that we're gonna find some big ones. Uh, hopefully that will lead to us catching at 50 plus during the tournament. I'm gonna try and dust off my chatterbait game, but I think we're gonna grind the grass and see if we can find some of the fish. Some big waves incoming, so I think we're gonna put away the camera and we're gonna head out towards the first spot. around about uh, side catches. Not catching perch, but um, a lot of zander. Yeah. Here we go. Yesterday we had a couple zander on the... Uh... Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> Struggle is real. And spinner baits. Now, big man chatter. 
It's not the species we're after because during the competition we want to catch bigger zander than this. But if we catch a perch this size, I'm quite happy. Fish fish of the day. We're not fishing with spinning reels enough. No. It's so much fun. It is a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna lift it. But. <laughs> Just went in my sleeve, like completely up my sleeve. <gasps> You snuck a snook up your sleeve. Yeah. Jeez. Well, a lot of fun. Nice. This one has stripes. This one has stripes, yeah. On the wingman shadow. It almost has no stripes. Yeah, it's a completely pale fish. No stripes at all. Bye bye. Well, that's it for today. We are burnt to a crisp. It was um, sunny, windy, and we have quite a good indication where we can find the fish. We usually found a spot. We got some contacts. We moved away. We didn't grind it out completely. Learned some new spots, um, caught some perch. We caught uh, perch, decent size, not really the size we're after during the competition. Um, uh, little, little, little. Enough pike, only one zander, but Jesper missed the zander, which was like 80 at the time, and now it's already 85. So <laughs> by the end of the day, during dinner, it's probably be a 90 plus zander, but it was a good zander, to be honest. Uh, Franz, thank you, sir, for helping us out scouting the uh, area. Welcome. Yes, and I are gonna do the predator tour tomorrow and probably gonna focus on pike first and hopefully get some perch in between. We managed to end up in sixth place competing in a multi species tournament against the top of Europe with 150 teams, I think, competing. Not bad as hardcore pike hangers, I must say. After the predator tour, we departed for Sweden for another expedition, which will be covered in part two, where shallow trolling was also a really successful tactic. We will also show you how we manage to fish for pike during summer from both the little rubber boat and the big boat. Some unwanted species came along and of course a lot of dedicated hardcore pike hunting. Stay tuned for that and if you have any questions or suggestions drop them in the members only whatsapp group. Thanks for watching guys and enjoy winter while it lasts. Oh, oh fucking hell. This is... This is a nice. <laughs> wow.